Hey guys, this is John, and I'm playing Alex in the five minute pool on ICC. And we have, oh, let's go knight f3 on move three. Check. We'll avoid the Nimzo Indian. Uh, let's play knight bd2, just blocking the check. We'll play g3 now, fianchettoing the bishop. He also brings his bishop onto the long diagonal. Now let's castle. So these lines are relatively new to me. I don't play them very often as white. I hope that this bishop out on b4 is more of a liability for black, hence it's not surprising that they move it back. Now, a lot of times black looks to follow a d5, so I would expect that move in the future. If I play something like rook e1 looking to play e4, I think that would be the answer. So maybe queen c2 is a bit better. Let's play that just so we can prepare e4, but it might be more useful than playing rook e1. Okay, so hmm, knight e5 comes to mind. Taking simply comes to mind. Let's play b3. I'll keep the tension in the center for the moment. Put the bishop on b2. He plays c5, okay. So I can take either way, or I can just leave the pawns as is. Let's take this way first. Usually when you have those four pawns clustered, it's good to take towards the center. So you're trading your wing pawn for the flank pawn immediately. Let's settle black with hanging pawns if they want. So the hanging pawns are the structure that uh, could arise if black plays b takes c5 here. They actually take with the bishop instead. Okay, so let's just play bishop b2. At least now I can play against this d-pawn. That's something I can look forward to doing. Let's play rook a d1. Putting the rook on c1 makes sense as well, but I don't think it has much of a future down the c-file. Black is inevitably going to play rook c8. And when they do, it'll be opposing my queen on c2. I can bother that piece with bishop h3 at some point. For the moment, I'm thinking uh, either knight g5 or maybe queen b1. Probably queen b1. That seems safer. Knight g5 threatens bishop takes f6 straight away, though. So I kind of like that move. Maybe I should play that. Maybe I don't need to prepare. Let's try it. Looks tricky. And there are two pieces in the way, so black can't do too much damage straight off the bat here. So very simply, I'm trying to mate him on h7. Bishop takes f6, queen takes f6, queen takes h7 mate. And if h6, I still get to do that. h6 doesn't really deal with the threat. Knight b4, active. So if bishop takes f6, knight takes c2, bishop takes d8. They can just take, so either queen f5 or just queen b1. Queen f5, queen d7, probably. Let's go queen b1. We'll keep the threat. I don't know that knight b4 did much for black. Sort of an instant gratification move. Like, yes, it makes me move my queen, but beyond that, I don't really see what that move does. Okay, now I'm thinking knight d to e4. And then the d pawn would be pinned. So knight d e4, knight takes e4. Knight takes e4. I'm threatening knight f6. They could play bishop e7, though. That seems to hold everything. I could play a3, just kick that knight back. I think I see a good continuation. Let's play a3. And after knight c6, I think then I'll play this. Hmm. He actually dives in with the knight. Interesting. So if I play b4, what are you going to do? Bishop d4? Right now, this could be a threat. I could play knight c4 also. Mm, knight c4 is kind of attractive here. What do you do about knight c4? This is a complex move. I mean, clearly they're hoping for queen takes c2, bishop takes f2. So I'm not going to do that. So I'm debating between b4 and knight c4. Let's go knight c4. See what he has up his sleeve against that. That also defends a3. And we're unleashing the rook down the d-file. Also guarding d4 a bit better. So they can't put a, a minor piece there. These last couple moves are ones that, if I was playing a tournament game, I would definitely spend more time on. The position is getting sharp. It's getting complex. But as it stands, I have two minutes remaining. I got to move fast. 
So pure and simple, I'm just threatening queen takes c2. Black should probably address that by doing something like queen e7, maybe. What will I do on queen e7? Queen e7, I can just take on c2. They take on c4. I take on b7, and that queen would be overloaded. I would win a piece in that case. Hmm. It's not immediately apparent to me how black gets out of this dangerous situation. Knight c2 is pretty bold. I mean, knight c6 would have been more normal there. Although that was looking good for me as well. They could maybe play something like b5. Okay, knight g4. Attacking this knight, also attacking f2. I think I'm just going to pull my knight back. Let's just play knight h3. Awkward square. Not ideal to have the knight on the side of the board, but it reinforces f2, and this knight is still in danger. Maybe now they should get out of the pin. Like queen e7. Maybe I take on d5 then? e2 could hang, though. Yep, they play it. Okay, I'm going to keep this simple. So let's just take here. And then we'll take here. If they take here, we have queen e4. So, yep, capturing that way is expected. Now let's just do this. So we want a pawn. Queen c3 also could be a threat. Trying to do some damage with that queen bishop battery. Maybe knight f4 now. Yeah, let's go knight f4. Looking to get in knight d5. Leaves a3 hanging, but I think it's worth it to get my knight to d5. Yeah, he's going defensive. Okay. h3 or king g2 maybe? King g2 seems a bit better. Let's do that. So I like my position a lot. I'm up a pawn. I have a good knight. Maybe they could play something like b5 and try to chip away at my c pawn. Okay, h3 is suggesting itself. Yeah, let's play h3. Knight e5 will probably be played. Let's take that. So we've given up our good bishop, but we obtain this dominant knight. I want to get out of the way of b5. Let's play queen here. If f5, probably queen d3. Hmm. F4. Nah. Let's do... Let's just do this. We'll guard the c pawn a bit better. Hmm. Maybe bishop b2. Queen takes, rook takes, rook c2, bishop takes a3, rook a1 at the end. That should be fine. I win that a pawn in that line. Come here, maybe knight takes f6 ideas in the future. Also guard the a3 pawn, that's nice. Let's play h4, maybe see if we can probe him with h5. Just try to avoid complications because my position's good. I think black's going to try something a little crazy if I keep pushing here. In the time situation, obviously, very favorable to me. Check. Let's check, let's see how he reacts to that. Hmm. We'll go e4, just further reinforcing this piece. Uh huh. Let's go here. I think knight f5 in the future is going to be really strong. Oh, actually, yeah, I kind of hung something with that. I'm still going to go here. You can take c4. I didn't see it. I'm just trying to bring my knight back to d5 now. Let's probe with this. Come in. Eventually try to attack him. I'm just going to take that. Okay. Interesting. It's a good defense. Time. Um, let's see if he wants to trade into an endgame. I'm going to go here and then maybe go after that pawn on c6. Check. Take that. Or on a7, I mean. Going to the c6 square. Check. Let's see what he comes up with. My knight can dance around a lot. Let's actually... Okay, now Check. I'm going to push this. Because I can push the b-pawn. Not much he can do about it. 
Okay. Check. Check. All right, we get the flag at the end. All right, so imperfect technique, surely, but we get the win. And I was in control after that, uh, after I won the pawn in the middle game. So let's go back and have a look. So knight f3 and move three. Way more often I play knight c3, but I'm trying to introduce this to my over-the-board repertoire as well. Future opponents, you're on notice <laughs> that I might play this move. So check. black plays bishop e4 check, and I block with the knight. Bishop d2 is played more often, but that leads to positions that I think are uh, pretty easy to play for black if they know the theory. So knight bd2 at least keeps some more tension in the position because black is less likely or less willing to trade the dark square bishop for the knight. Whereas if you put the bishop on d2, they'll, they will gladly swap the bishops either right away or like they often play queen e7 or a5. Uh, not that these positions don't have a right to exist, but knight bd2, at least for a blitz game, is more interesting. And uh, if black ever takes on d2, I'll have the pair of bishops. So black just castles. I fiend keto this bishop. The problem with this setup, though, for white is that very often this knight is just better on c3. It's on d2, but it wishes it were on c3, like as in this case. And I think black playing d5 is kind of the antidote to this knight's position. Because uh, now after, like say I had taken on d5 right away, it's hard to make this piece relevant because what are you going to do with it? Knight b3 seems awkward. It like blocks the b-pawn. It's not on a great square. I guess maybe knight e5 and try to send the other knight over to f3 could be a plan. But on the whole, it'd be better to have it here. It doesn't block the dark square bishop. It exerts some pressure on d5. Much more coherent place for the knight. So I played b3, black played c5. Now I took on d5, they took back with their pawn, and now I took. So this pawn structure uh, is yielding many different types of formations. So you saw after my capture and black took here, black already has decisions to make. They could take with a piece, they could potentially take like with the bishop or maybe even the knight if they want to keep this pawn on e6. I'd say taking with a pawn is more normal. After here, I more often see opponents taking back with their pawn though, and this establishes the so-called hanging pawn structure. And even though it's called the hanging pawn structure, that doesn't mean uh, the pawns are just undefended. Uh, that's just the name of the structure where there's no pawns on either side of this duo to protect them. So they have to be protected by pieces. And this structure is a classic one in chess, and it can be either weak or strong depending upon how you handle it. Uh, so you've seen this before in my games if you watch my channel. I've more often played against this structure, but occasionally I'll take on this structure depending upon certain openings uh, that I play. So I think it's a little bit better for black to take this way. I would rather play with the hanging pawns than the isolated pawn most of the time. Bishop takes c5. Now the d-pawn has no pawns on either side of it. It's going to have to be tended to by the pieces. But let's just see what the engine thinks. It's, it's kind of a judgment call, I think. Both moves are acceptable for black. Yeah, the engine doesn't see much of a difference one way or the other. For the white side, I would rather play against this, though, than c5 and d5. So bishop b2, black plays knight c6, and I put the rook here. So I'll leave this rook where it stands for now. I think it's useful to guard f2. If, for instance, I played rook fd1, because often you face a decision like which rook to use, I am a little bit worried about f2. This may not work right away, check. but something like this, and then knight g4 check. check, and maybe the knight gets into e3, could down the line be a concern. And I think right now it's just going to fail because of uh, maybe stuff like, or maybe I just even move the queen. Yeah, let them take, and then uh, I have two minors for the rook and the pawn. But uh, I feel a little bit better leaving this rook on f1 for now. And I think the occupation of the c-file, while logical looking at first, because this is an open file, plays into black's hands. Because like I said, they're going to put a rook on c8. I don't see the point of doing that. I'd rather have my rook aimed at the pawn on d5. So rook a d1, black played rook c8, and here I decided to launch some play with knight g5. The engine still thinks this is roughly even. Now it starts to like knight g5. I was suggesting queen f5 a moment ago. But I played knight g5, so again, the threat is bishop takes f6, queen takes f6, or pawn takes f6, and then queen takes h7 mate. So black played knight b4. I was kind of criticizing that move. It just doesn't seem like black gains much from that. Like, yes, they are attacking my queen, but as soon as I move the queen out of the way, 
I don't know that that knight has a useful follow-up, but it might just be subject to attack by my A pawn on that B4 square. We'll check the engine, but the knight B4 to C2 idea didn't impress, I don't think. So the engine says black should just play G6 or D4. G6 would block uh, that threat. I was kind of hoping to induce a move like this because at least black weakens that long diagonal. Yeah, maybe bishop d4 is also playable, just offering a trade of the bishops. It's a playable position for both sides. So knight b4, I went queen b1. Queen f5 is also recommended by the engine. I didn't like queen d7, though. I thought they could propose a trade, and I don't have time to take on f6 in this case. Although bishop h3 might be a good response. Mm -hmm. Then I renew the threat on f6, and I also threaten queen takes d7. And if this trade happens, this rook is under attack, and so is that knight, and possibly the h7 pawn. But nevertheless, queen b1, black played g6, I played a3. So here's the moment of truth for black, so they dive in with knight c2. Maybe that move is not as bad as I thought it would be. I just thought they would play the knight back here. But maybe that gives white exactly what I want out of this. I did see a line, knight d e4. So using the presence of the rook, that's another reason to put the rook on d1 a few moves ago, by the way. It opposes that queen on d8. And he can't take with a pawn, he would lose the queen. And if he takes with the knight, I take with my knight, probably. Yeah, because it's hanging on, on g5 now, so knight takes. And now I'm threatening knight f6 check, supported by the bishop. That would be terrible for the black king if I was able to administer a check there. So hence a move like, I thought bishop e7, but then I can play rook takes d5. And this bishop lurking on g2 helps me tactically. If black takes on d5, I have knight f6 check. check, and that wins the queen. Discovery here. So maybe black saw that and just decided that, you know, they wanted to complicate the position. Maybe they just didn't want to drop the knight back. Knight a6 maybe could be played. I see that's also a suggestion of the computer. That way the bishop is involved in the defense of d5. It does put the knight on the rim, but maybe black can hold here with the bishop helping to guard. Still seems like white has nice play. Yeah, bishop h3 I saw was recommended. That attacks the rook. I still like white. So knight c2, and again, the point of this move is if I take it, I just lose Check. my queen to this discovered attack. So I don't want to do that. Knight c4. Black can't take it. Yeah, it looks like this is a good move. The computer approves. It also says b4. What didn't I like about b4? I thought maybe black would come here. And I was trying to stop that. Knight gf3, just move the knight back. Hmm. That may be playing to try to trap this knight versus using my knight on g5 or trying to get at d5. Yeah, because as you can see, this knight has no safe square to go to, especially now that d4 is not available. But knight c4 looked active and in the spirit of the position, so that's why I played it. Now black spent a long time. Yeah, we're almost even on time after this knight g4 move. It's a tough position for black. Uh, I wasn't completely sure how they should handle it myself. So I'm threatening just queen takes c2. And I mentioned a line, if black goes here, trying to get their queen out of the d-file issue, then queen takes c2, d takes c4, bishop takes b7, and that queen is overloaded. It was trying to defend two minor pieces. And after queen takes b7, I can just take here, and white has won a clean piece. So maybe the, the move that black came up with, knight g4, moving that attacked piece is fine. I also thought b5 might be worth considering, counterattacking the knight. And then best play from here, take bishop e7, hmm, or b takes c4, that seems more normal, just take the piece. b takes, still complicated, still probably better to play white here though. Black's just under the gun. There's lots of pressure on d5, and they still haven't figured out the file issue. Queen e7. Kind of works both ways, though, doesn't it? Because I can't take here once again Check. because the bishop takes f2 with the discovery. I always have to bear that in mind. So on queen e7, the game might go bishop takes f6, queen takes, and now bishop takes d5. Okay. And I'm on this bishop, which means if they take my knight, I can take their bishop and... I'll have one upon, actually two pawns there. 
And if bishop takes d5, rook takes d5, I'm defending this knight. So white escapes with the extra material. So black played knight g4, probably not a bad attempt. And I went knight h3, retreating the attack knight. It just felt like f2 needed extra protection too. So even though this isn't a uh, fantastic square for the knight on the rim, it does perform a function here. It also keeps the bishop open. If I had played knight f3, that blocks the bishop. Knight e4 is not a move I considered, but I don't think with uh, f6 being defended twice by black's knight and queen that knight e4 is that good. Maybe though, I see the eval <laughs> still looks good for white. But I played knight h3, queen e7. Okay, now the eval goes way up in white's favor. What did I miss then? Because <laughs> if it's plus three, I probably missed something coming up. So queen takes c2, they take here. I took on b7, so queen here, right away was good, huh? Oh, I see why. Yeah. If you want to pause your video and figure out why this is so good for white compared to what I did, you can do that right now. So basically the idea is I'm threatening queen g7 or queen h8 mate. So black doesn't have time to like take my bishop on g2. Uh, knight here would also not help. I just take on f6 or just maybe take on b7 first. Either one looks good. So after queen c3, black would be obliged to play f6 probably if they don't want to lose material immediately. But then we can take b7 or I think even just take c4 right away. But take b7, they take back, and now queen check. takes c4 comes with check. That's a nuance I failed to consider. And we're hitting the knight on g4, so it's a double attack. King and knight. Yeah, and after they get out of the check, you just bank the piece, white wins. Okay, so yeah, I chose the wrong move order here. Was it available on the next move too? Because I played bishop takes b7 here. Yeah, queen c3 again was good. Works for the same reason. Black doesn't have a good answer to the mate threats. Has to play f6 and then we Check. take and go win the piece. That would have been simple. So as played, I played b takes c4 and that gives black a chance to defend. They're down a pawn, but maybe with my knight being off sides and these pawns being potentially weak. As long as black doesn't get hurt on this long diagonal, they might be okay. So queen e7, I played knight f4. Queen e7 seemed kind of weak. Yeah, once I was able to get this knight to d5, I was feeling better. From here, uh, the time situation was the biggest factor. So here black could have tried bishop takes f2. That's interesting. So take queen Check. takes d5. Wow. Okay, so that plays off the fact that this pawn is pinned. If I were to take this, then rook takes c2. And the idea is if rook takes d5, then they have 93 check. check, royal fork. It's a nice resource. King f3, takes c2. Material-wise, it's even. I guess the engine still prefers white. Maybe this knight is poorly placed. c5. What if black just takes it? e3, ah, and that very nearly just traps the piece. Probably does. Check. Knight e1, king here. Yeah, and that's a trap knight. Yeah, that's very hard to see with no time, so I'm not surprised they didn't find bishop takes f2 with the idea of queen takes d5 after I take. So they played bishop d6, I played h3, knight e5, now they're on c4 twice, so I decided to take. And then queen here. I was just a little worried that c4 would get undermined. My queen side pawns are weak, and if c4 is undermined, my knight might be unstable on d5. We'll go through these moves kind of fast. Guaranteed there were multiple places where we could improve. Check. Here I played h6, check. Black didn't take it. If they had taken it, I didn't have a clear way of proceeding. I kind of just assumed I would have good stuff available with rook check. h1, check. Let's see. King here, queen f5. Yeah, threatening h7. Rook h8, f4, attack the bishop, try to open the position. It does look very good for me. So they ignore the pawn. I played e4, just propping up the knight. Oh, hello, Check. knight e7. <laughs> End the game immediately. Whoops, didn't see that with 33 seconds remaining. I played the slightly less desirable move, knight e3. Yeah, now I wanted to take with the queen, but then they would win e4, so I decided taking with the knight was better. And they didn't see that c4 was hanging, otherwise I'm certain they would have taken that pawn. And 
White still has an advantage here. That's not surprising to me. The engine recommends queen f5 because the queen and the knight are a powerful attacking force. Slightly better than a queen and bishop in most cases because a queen and knight complement each other. The knight moves differently than the queen does and vice versa, whereas the queen bishop, there's always going to be some overlap with those piece movements. So that explains why a queen and knight uh, typically function better in an attack than a queen and bishop. So I might have had a chance to outplay black even there. But yeah, as played, it was just a time scramble, obviously, for both sides. I think I overestimated my potential attack, and once black won that h-pawn and my time was ticking down, I thought, well, let's just play for an endgame. <laughs> At least there I'm not going to overlook something immediately. And it's always nice to have a knight versus a bishop in a an endgame where uh, the clock is a big factor. Check. You always favor those knights at shorter time controls in these situations. Not like at the outside of the game, but I mean like when the time is really ticking down. I think black should have just kept their king a little closer to the queen side. Then he could help out when I do eventually make a pass Check. pawn. But as played, black brought the king over here and that was clearly a bad idea. Check. Uh, even though it took me a while to organize this. Hmm. Actually, maybe they still can draw. King g5, knight c4, king f5, just following the engine line, b6, king e6. So the, the only thing black could try is to bring the king back, because they need that to stop me from promoting eventually. Bishop a7, and I can try to go after this, but even if I win this pawn, I'm going to lose b7, and probably black can sacrifice their bishop for my f-pawn uh, down the line and make a draw. A lot to process and a time scramble. As played, I just wanted to make sure to retain my f-pawn. So you'll notice when I was pushing this pawn and black played g3, whatever that was, I didn't Check. take here, because if I take, bishop takes. Now if I promote, then, well, I've only got my king and my knight left, no pawns. So when black played g3, it was very important just to play f3 and keep that f-pawn. I know I'm going to win their bishop. Yeah, and he just let me take it. But had the game continued, like bishop c7, I just promote, take. I'm going to bring my knight back and eventually go win this pawn and win the game. Or actually, I can just win the pawn right away. So eventful game. I think it started becoming sharp, meaning uh, every move really started to matter right when I played knight g5. So when I played knight g5, I set up this bishop takes f6 threat, and black responding with knight b4 created some interesting tactical twists in its own right. I get the sense that white held the initiative for quite a while, but um, as you can see, this was not perfectly played, but I'm still relatively satisfied. All right, hope you guys enjoyed this one, and I'll be back again tomorrow with another video. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.